Greetings, First Congregational Church family. As we've now entered into our stewardship season for 2023, we wanted to take also a moment to either introduce to some of you for the first time and remind the rest of you about another ongoing component of our life of stewardship here at First Congregational Church, and that is our Legacy Society. The Legacy Society benefits the foundation of the church, formed a number of years ago, and that foundation, which is broken into a number of different kinds of endowments, benefits the life of our church in a great number of ways. And in this short presentation, you're going to hear from uh, Mr. John Goodpasture, former church treasurer, Linda Solash Reed, member of the church and a lawyer that helps people with estate planning and preparing wills, our current treasurer, Mr. Jim Schreiber, and former moderator Jamie Binkley about the nature and the importance of becoming a part of our Legacy Society and considering leaving the church uh, in your estate planning, a gift of your estate to help to benefit the ongoing long-term life and vitality of First Congregational Church of Winter Park. So I hope you'll take a moment to watch this presentation and consider in your planning leaving part of your legacy with the ongoing legacy of First Congregational Church of Winter Park. Thank you. Hello to everyone viewing. My name is John Goodpasture, and I'm here to talk about the foundation. Over the past 10 years, I've been a church treasurer, a member of the trustees, and also a member of the investment committee that looks over the foundation. Our foundation was formed some 50 years ago as a trust agreement between the church and the foundation. The mission of the foundation, as given in the trust agreement, is to provide funds for religious, educational, and charitable purposes. The charter of the foundation also requires that the assets be professionally and independently managed by outside wealth managers. And to that end, the trustees have chosen UBS Wealth Management a unit of the International UBS Investment Bank as our wealth managers. UBS wealth managers are here in Winter Park and the investment committee meets with them just about every quarter. The foundation is also divided into a number of endowments. These endowments have been funded by members and friends of the church over many years. There's an endowment to support college scholarships. There's an endowment to support the organ. There's an endowment to buy special music. There's an endowment for capital improvements to the church, like the new cupola, new air conditioning, paint the building, new roof. And there's a general purpose endowment which the trustees can use for the general accomplishment of the mission of the foundation. Over the years, many members and friends of the church have given stocks and bonds, as well as cash, to the foundation. I encourage you as a part of your financial planning to think about a transfer of your assets to the foundation as you age or even as you pass away. I am here to assure you that if you make a contribution to the foundation that your funds will be professionally independently managed by outside wealth managers to the benefit and to the accomplishment of the mission of the Charter. Your gift is the gift that will keep on giving. God bless. Hello, I'm Linda Solash Reed. I've been a lawyer for four plus decades. For the last 17 of those years, I've been in private practice where estate planning has been a large part of what I do every day. Now you may think that, oh, I don't have an estate, but an estate does not mean it's large or small, modest. It means that you're an adult and you have worked your life and you have a legacy that you want to leave. So the next question is, do you have an estate plan? And I can say, with full confidence that everybody 
listening to this does have an estate plan. The question is, did you put it together and is it individual to your needs and wishes? Because if you do not put your plan in writing, then the state has a plan for you. The statute says, who gets what? Now, for many people, that may work. If you're married, it will go to your spouse, your children. Things get complicated though, because oftentimes the statute would have your assets and your estate going to the wrong people at the wrong times. And because you did not specify who you want to manage the process, the wrong people, or let's say the less than ideal people might be charged with managing that process. In addition, there are a lot of issues that are so individual and are not addressed if you do not put your estate plan in writing. And by this, I mean a will or revocable trust, but I'll use will uh, as the generic term for a written plan. If you have someone who you want to leave something to who has special needs, who is born with an intellectual disability, who has mental health problems, who has addiction issues, if you want to leave something to someone who is under age, under 18, if you are a blended family as many of us are, and you and your spouse have very clear plans and agreement about who gets what, and if you want all your family members to have to go along with what you and your spouse have agreed on. These are all issues that are very individual and that require putting together a thoughtful estate plan that is tailored to your needs and wishes. In closing, there are two main reasons why everybody, meaning everybody 18 and up, should have an estate plan. The first is because you really are making a gift to your loved ones by simply doing a plan, by putting your wishes in writing, by letting them know what you want, by not forcing your loved ones to struggle with this when you're gone and they can't ask you questions. You are giving them a gift and it is a blessing. The other goes back to where we started. You have a legacy. It may not be huge in dollars, or maybe it is, but it is a legacy. It is yours to share with your loved ones, and a will and a state plan is your way to share it. Thanks for listening. Hello, I'm Jim Schreiber, the treasurer of First Congregational Church of Winter Park. We just heard from Linda Solash Reed talking about the benefits of having a written family estate plan, and from John Goodpasture about the First Congregational Church Foundation. I want to see now if we can perhaps weave those two topics uh, together. Have you ever asked yourself, is there something that I could do today that would ensure that First Congregational Church is still around 50 or even 100 years from now? In some ways, that's a very hard question, but you know, from a financial standpoint, there's actually a fairly clear answer. A bequest of money or property included in your written financial uh, estate plan to the First Church Foundation could ensure the financial stability of our congregation for decades to come. If you did it, would it really make a difference? The answer is yes, and here's why. The power of compounding interest. It's how the, fin uh, how the foundation increases the value of the endowment year over year. Let's say you had $100, you put it into an account that would pay you 1% interest a year. At the end of that first year, you'd have $101. Now in the second year, you'd get interest not only on the $100 you initially had, but also on the $1 that you made in year one. By year uh, 25, that account would be worth $128. By year 50, it would be worth $165. So you can see that over time, even a modest initial amount of money can grow into a substantial amount of money. I have a personal uh, example of that in my lifetime. When I was 
A senior in college, I received a $2,500 inheritance from my grandfather. And someone whose opinion I respected told me that what I should do is invest that money in the stock market. So I did. I invested it in what was then a fairly new uh, concept called a mutual fund who invested that money for me in the stock market. But I went beyond that and I told them, take the interest, dividends, and any capital gains distributions that come from that investment and reinvest it back into the account. So in essence, I set up a compounding interest account. It's, uh, I've let that money there for almost 50 years, except once, 1981, I took out $800 uh, as a down payment on an engagement ring. That was a good investment too, but that's a, sto that's a story for another day. As I say, that money has sat in that account, invested in the stock market now for close to 50 years. And I can tell you that initial $2,500 today is worth substantially in excess of $300 hundred thousand dollars. This is despite the ups and downs of the stock market and the vagaries of the economy over that time. But the power of compounding interest allows that fairly so the modest amount initially to grow over time into a very substantial amount. You know, I'm still amazed at this because all it took was faith and patience. We can do this for First Congregational Church of Winter Park. But we have to take that first step and make that initial investment. The foundation today is worth about $2.3 million current market value. We'd like to grow it to $10 million in the future. And if members of the congregation were to make bequests, I believe that we could do this over the next several decades if we commit to do it now. We can do this. On behalf of myself and trustees, I'd like to thank those people who have already committed to making bequests for their participation, and I invite the rest of the congregation to consider whether or not they would make a bequest to First Congregational Church of Winter Park. Compounding interest, a little faith, and patience. That's all it takes. Hello, everyone. I'm Jamie, and as Sean mentioned earlier, I'm a former moderator and trustee at First Congregational Church of Winter Park. Like many of you, my family and I have spent many years in the church, and our children were a part of the youth programs and were both baptized and confirmed here at the church. We were also married here in a joyous ceremony that we still hold close in our hearts. Many of you have experienced similar joys. We've celebrated together births and baptisms and marriages, and also, yes, remembering those who've passed. This is truly a special place for all of us where we all are welcome to worship fully and participate fully in the life of the church. Our family decided to remember First Congregational with a legacy gift because we wanted to invest in the future of the church. We had talked about leaving a bequest, but thought our estate might be too small or not have enough left when all was said and done. However, our attorney mentioned that we could leave a percentage of our estate to charities. And so we decided to do that versus an exact amount. Maybe it'll be more, maybe it'll be less, who knows. But as Jim said, even a small amount invested wisely and with patience it grows into something significant. So we knew that our gift would matter too. It would be greatly appreciated if you would take steps to invest in the future of First Congregational Church also through a legacy gift. Thank you and God bless.